say? I did. Did you have to drive far? No, I didn't. Did you get lost? Absolutely not. Are you glad you're here? <laughs> of course I'm glad I'm here. I'm, I'm glad you're just terrified you. not to be here. <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> We're not going to give people the impression I'm this bad org. Okay. You must be on time, folks. Anyone who deals with me knows. And, and you were on time. So what did you just say? What did you say? The spirit? What is it about the spirit? What, oh, the loving spirit? Uh-huh. So let him love. Okay. All right. So I can. <laughs> the book. We're all here for the author, the book, as well as, as you and what you do. Mm -hmm. So let's just kept to the chase. I wrote a book. <clears throat> Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. It's on many people's bucket list and they never do it. And it was so, never on mine. Well, good for you for, for leaving part of you. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I was never an intention or a thought to write a book. I, uh, I've had people ask me forever and ever, along with other things that I've done in my life from others, uh, just bugging me, quite frankly. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you leave me alone? Uh, so the book came right into play with everything else I've pretty much done. And I have had, you don't really know much about me. Uh, you know, I'm a good person. I hope you know that. <laughs> ah, don't murder, don't kill. So we'll cover that at the end of the show. However, um, I've had a great life. A, an absolutely superb, um, couldn't have asked for more. There's some parts of it I could have cut out, probably about five years when I moved here. Mm -hmm. Could have cut those out and uh, live real happy without them. But, you know, those are the years that helped me learn, helped me grow, helped me know more of myself. So the book that my friends and, and acquaintances wanted me to write <laughs> is that book. It's the, when I was, I guess, call it out and about and enjoying my life before I, I settled down. I think I've settled down. I, I'd like to think I'm not. Again, book, writing a book. It is so time consuming, as you know, or anyone who's ever uh, attempted it. Um, the authors, the other day I, I went on Google, it's 300,000 new authors a year. Mm. Mm, we're correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the time, hour-wise, it takes to write a book. And now we're talking uh, revisions, we're talking copywriting, we're talking proofreading. I don't have time for that. That is just too much work for this little whatever time I have left in this in this world. I want to find myself laughing, being happy, and paying attention. Mm -hmm. However, segue right into that. Do you like that? Yeah, I like that. Like that? <laughs> so do I. Um, so paying attention from birth, um, from parenting, being grateful for the, the mother that I was given, to watching her pay attention to me. That wasn't good sometimes. Um, but because she paid attention, she helped uh, direct, guide, give me a path for life that I'm quite, I'm quite excited about. I couldn't have done it without her. That carried on not only through her bringing me here and raising me to be the responsible female or woman that I am, to paying attention everywhere. Now, I'm from New York City. Have you ever been to New York City? I have. Uh, a uh -huh. Do you see how fast people walk and talk mm -hmm. and everybody's mushed up together and you gotta try to get the train, you gotta try to get the plane, you gotta try to get the bus and, and everybody's pushing you backwards and you're trying to push forward and everybody's humping on you and you can't figure out why they're humping on you. Just please stop. <laughs> Not the way to start Good a day, Lord. but that's the way, <laughs> that's New York, that's the way you start your day. So you have to pay attention just to be a native New Yorker. Mm -hmm. It is one of the best schools for learning how to pay attention. Uh, to know your, your pocket's gonna get picked if you left something that you want in there. It's gonna happen. I took that, those lessons, paying attention, and just kept them in my life, wherever I went, wherever, everywhere I go. Every, uh, I've lived in six different cities. I don't even know how many jobs I've had. I, don't know, I can't even count all my accomplishments. But I, I'm entitled to believe most of them, if not all of them, happened for one reason only, because I paid attention. Um, every so often, you know, I say this in jest, but in truth, an idiot will slip through. But I try as best as I can to keep the idiots at advance. No, you stay over there. 
That's my fault. First time, shame on me. Second time, shame on me. Third time, shame on me. That's a cozyism. <laughs> That's a cozyism. And that is pretty much how the book was created. Just taking it, taking insight and, and, and aspects of everything in life and putting it into words. And this this head up here that just goes, you'd be surprised if they opened me up. They'd say, what the heck? Closed me back real quick and said, let's go to the next person. So busy up there. I want to bring up, uh, oh, I see you bought the book. Oh my God, <laughs> bring me, give me, give me, give me that. Yes, I did bring my book. Would you like me to autograph um, this? And, and I got it from Amazon and it came right away. That's funny because really I'm still fast, waiting. a couple days. Really? Yes, yes, it did. Well, who the heck do you know? I know, right? It's my book. Honestly, I've been waiting for two weeks for my old doggone as book. You, as soon as we had our little visit the other day, I said, let me get this lady's book. Well, I really try to support time. all local artists. Miss Angelique. When I can. <laughs> well, I feel I so should have bought two. I usually buy two. One to give away, one to keep. Oh. Because your friends should try to promote you. I am. So I'll Would you say that out loud? Say that again. Your friends should help promote you. Say it one more time. Louder. Your friends should help promote mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. So when I buy one, I usually try to buy two things. See, so that I as, give, as one, one entrepreneur, one it's one entrepreneur to another. That's what it is. One says, I'm just doing it. I just, you know, let me get this, let me get this mm -hmm. lady's book. Two says, I'm trying to help you. You know? Ten. Ooh. That means I got some buddy. No, just... <laughs> Actually, I have a I have a buddy in Florida. Her book club ordered it, and it's oh, twelve of them. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's a real good. Yeah, thing. that I thought that was <laughs> adorable. So I next month's book read. Oh, okay, I can't nice. wait till they get. Oh, oh, I know which one I'm going to ask you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Miss Angelique. <laughs> Oh my God, this is just so surreal. I'm actually signing a book that I'm an author. Aww. You know, we should all just count our blessings and our, our baby steps, each and every one we take. And I'm constantly taking steps, just seeing how many more I can accomplish. I don't count, but I celebrate the small victories and the big ones. Mm -hmm. So I hope you celebrate it in some way. <laughs> oh, I do. Okay, got to give you the smiley face. Cancel. XOXO. No. No, no, no hugs and kisses? No. no okay. Your face. Thank you're, you. You're, you're pushing. Thank you so much. <laughs> ah, so I want to ask you uh, yes. about some of my cozyisms and what, what you think of them. And I have one on the top of my head. Dog it. I'm never I'm supposed to do this, but I've got so many of them. Okay, here's one. <laughs> What'd you say? You didn't know what? It's an interview and a quiz. Yes, it is. And it may be more than that. So okay. You just hang on there to your little hat. Okay. Okay. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I yes. am. Yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> a sister who gave up her hair appointment yes, for me? Keep your hat on. That's I right. Laugh. All right. So, mm -hmm. let's cover this one. Show me. Oh, shucks. No, that's not the one. Okay, that's the way I do it in the morning. Oh, this one is good for you. No relationship, no relationship starts off bad. So at the end of it, focus on the beginning. How does that hit you? At the end of, oh, that's. No relationship starts off bad. It doesn't. So at the end of it, focus on the beginning. So when you're asking me, how does that hit me? How, do, how does that apply to my life? What do I feel when I hear that? It's, it's an absolute truth because um, you wouldn't have that relationship in the first place. Everyone that we cross paths with has a purpose and a season for us. And I like that um, you say, focus on, you know, when you meet someone, there's something that initially attracted you to them. So at the end of that, I'm, I'm really big into list and listing all those good things they brought. And if you plan on staying in that relationship, hopefully that's longer than, than, the, than the, the things, that, you know, the bad things. And you, if you focus on those and see the good in everybody, 
it, it just makes life better. It makes that relationship stronger. Every, no one's no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. We all have we all have our flaws. We all fall short of the glory, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. What I've been married since ninety eight. Yeah, so I definitely focus on the good things when I'm upset. What brought us together? And he's still that kind, mm -hmm. wonderful person. Still makes me laugh. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Have you, so you've never been that woman who, uh, <laughs> who who slices the car? No. Takes the uh, no. the jackhammer or whatever Absolutely it is and not. breaks the glass. What no. do you what do you think of, of those? I think it's fool, fools. <laughs> the people that do that. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Fools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an inside job. It's it's you know you, if you it's not so much that person. It's what's inside you. It's usually that person's insecurities, right? That makes them lash out that like that. So I, I just wasn't raised in an environment with a lot of violence mm -hmm. and screaming and hollering. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> perhaps that's why I have that perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather learn my lesson. Well, here, here's, here's a question that just from what you told me come off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Happiness, PHP, professional happy person. I love that. What do you think society can do, both men and women, to create a better relationship from the beginning? We know, we, okay, I'm not going to answer that because I answered my own question. What would your take be? Let's concentrate again on being happy. People meet each other, you know, again, the guy wrote his name on my arm, right? How do I know or make sure this is someone that... I'm going to do a lot of laughing, a lot of smiling, a lot of other things. <laughs> I said that out loud too. Good, right? <laughs> you don't know. That's part of the fun. But you don't know. All you can do is, I think, and in terms of how do you attract that kind of person? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I call it person? interviewing. But you have to be happy yourself, first of all. Okay. Right? Right. You have to be good with you. Right. Like attracts like. Right. You have to be really good with you, and you have to know that. Whoever you connect with has to add value to wherever you're at. Right. They can't fill a void. They can't, um, just don't expect so much out of this human being, just like as you are a human being. <laughs> you have to be good with yourself. And I don't, I don't know if I have an answer to that. It's an adventure. The whole men, men, woman thing is an adventure. We don't know what we want. They don't know what we need. <laughs> you know? They don't. I think communication, of course, is a big part. Always at the top of the list, mm -hmm. communication, being honest, mm -hmm. um, which are two things that people don't do. They don't communicate, and they're not honest. Mm -hmm. So just know it's going to be an adventure. Expect it not to be perfect, you know? Well, I don't know if perfect is the word, but you brought up two words mm -hmm. that just make my toes move inside my boots here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, wasn't that one. Uh, communication oh, yeah. is, is key. And, and the fact that people don't believe that they can make a difference in their tomorrows is pretty sad. When you're meeting someone uh, for the first time, and I know you've been married a long time, so you know what you don't want. Mm -hmm. I speak to kids, fifth graders to ninth graders. One of the questions that I ask them at the beginning of, this, of, the, of my speaking engagements, what do you not want to be? When that kid responds, you know what their parents do because they're saying everything that they don't want to be. I don't want to clean pools. I don't want to <laughs> clean hotels. I don't want to uh, be in the uh, maid business. I don't want to clean pools. I mean, they tell you, I don't want to be a drug dealer. I don't want to be teenage pregnant. They tell me these things. So we start from there, and my life pretty much started that way. I didn't, I don't know if I could say I had direction, but I had enough in the front of me that I did not want to be, did not want to be around, didn't want to be anything, have the county of association. So when I ask, and that's why I want to have these discussions on Cozy Up and Pay Attention, because we didn't say that enough either. The name of my show is called Cozy Up and Pay Attention. We have every, every right, every control in the world, but we don't want to ask because we don't want to know. You've got to ask the hard questions. Cozyism, asking the hard questions, well, chances are we'll get you the right answers. Mm -hmm. Or asking the right questions 
will get you the right answer. Now, do people lie? Sure they do. <laughs> they sure they do. Mm -hmm. But if you pay enough attention, you will pick up on all the BS. There's body language that goes with lies. There's there's voice. There's eyes. There's 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 not showing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Right. Oh, I'm still waiting for yesterday's date. He didn't show up. Guess what? He ain't coming. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. How many times do you do that? I had a, disc, a gentleman, lots of gentlemen, and uh, he was uh, in his head. He said, lots of gentlemen. Lots, lots. That's another show. <laughs> ooh, ooh, we do that when the kids can't listen. Uh, well, well, the teachers stay focused. See, I can stay, stay focused. Stay. Ooh, I'm with the men, my body says. I know, ooh. I see that. Okay. All right, turn the color my yeah. So, this particular gentleman met, we're out, some game party. We liked each other, exchanged numbers. He asked me out. We were going to dinner and a movie, I believe it was. It was a weekday. And uh, I waited. He was five minutes late. No phone call. Now, we didn't have cell phones then, but he was coming from work. So you're near a phone. And I waited. <laughs> oh, oh. He came up the block, I was going down the block. So he realizes it's me and he backed up and I let him. So we're, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the movies to dinner, where are you going? Really? I said, I don't wait and I don't wait for late. If I accept that the first date, I have set a precedent. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. And so as a female, as a human being who talks to everybody and their mother, I hear these stories all the time. And I say, you lie. You can control. You can have a, a heck of a lot of input. By golly, it's your life. And if you don't control it, poo poo to you. Because someone else is going to. Now you're walking around with the long face. Yeah. <laughs> my, mommy always, my mom always said, uh, just don't do anything in a relationship that you don't plan on doing all the time. And just when you're saying if you let him be late, if you accept that, you get late again. Yes. Late again. You let him cheat. Yes. Let cheat again. Yes. You know, <laughs> I've never been married for all the right reasons. Um, you know, th I'll tell you this: <laughs> several things about marriage are just for me. Uh, the hungry thing. You know, that's one of them. Why would I get together with a grown man who should be able to at least boil water for eggs? And I walk in the door and he tells me he's hungry. Well, my question is, where's my food? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a grown man. I messed up and, and, and I'm living with or dating somebody who can't cook? Poo poo to me. I won't do that. I love to cook. I love being a partner and I love giving. And I'm very much a giver as long as you don't spend too many nights. <laughs> don't, don't bring a toothbrush. No, 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 we don't need a toothbrush. Um, but I'm not going to, I think my problem, if I want to call it a problem, is I like Teddy Pendergrass's 50-50. You old enough to remember that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Not 60-40? Yeah. Talk about 50-50 mm -hmm. love? That's me and Teddy. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Talk about a 50-50 love. Yeah. I take 50-50 every day. 60-40 doesn't work for me. It would not make me happy. Happy. P-H-P. Cozy stone. No, no. I cook one day, you cook the next day. We decide where we want to go to movies. We decide this is a partnership mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. So I want to address these issues or conversations. That's all we're having. When I hear people and you just walk straight into the what is it to the spot to the webs at the spider to the fly? <laughs> Come on with it. Come on, make my day. Enough is enough. And we are now living in not the pandemic. The pandemic has only made people understand how much more they dislike their partners and their children. Or how much, or how much more they love their partner. One or the other. Wherever you were at, yes, sir. You're, you're just more of that. Right one now. way or the other. That's it. Exactly. Yep. But there's a whole bunch. Yes. There you know, because the news doesn't talk about the good ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's really, yeah. Right. Of course. And we have, within our own lives, we have uh, relationships and friends who we can look at, uh, girlfriends who are just constantly 
constantly making these same mistakes on the basis of, well, what can I do? Why don't you open your mouth and ask what you either do like, that you don't like, and you still can assess it. I swear to God, he's going to keep hear her. They're going to mess up. Liars are good. <laughs> I tell you, just like crime, that's what it Praying really helps too. What <laughs> helps? Praying helps. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. God, why did I get involved with that idiot? <laughs> Ask me the prayer comes in. Working on yourself helps. Finding your own happy place. Talk but to yourself. Communication. But you have to talk to you mm -hmm. first and foremost. You really in relationships. I just feel like you have to really be good with you to be really good at any relationship and especially being married because it's just hard, you know? Then you have to be okay with you and you have to communicate and you have to pray and you have to really want to be in it. It's a job, you know? How bad do you want it? How bad or how committed are you? Are you in it for the long term? Are you just passing through? You just trying to get a check? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you in it for? You know, do you want a life partner? Or it's just with all those things of communication, yeah. whether you're what speaking you to want? you, mm -hmm. right, or whether you're sitting down. Uh, I have a, a, a situation right now. Oh, God, can I talk about it? Mm. Yeah, she'll love me. I won't use her name. And it's happening as we speak. And this conversation she should have had two months ago is just going because, and I said to her, today. So when are you waiting to have this conversation? You know, I find with people in bad relationships, you can't really, you can give them advice, but they're not going to do anything. Oh, no, no, better. no, no. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Cozy Stone does not give advice. adults <laughs> advice. My mom said, you don't know when it's time, because this is my second marriage. Okay. My first was like four years when I was young. Okay. And um, my mom just kept saying, you don't know when it's time to go. Mm -mm. And this know. isn't necessarily, you know a, it's, it's not a bad <laughs> marriage. Oh, okay. It's not even a marriage. There's just the communication aspect is getting ready to blow up in both their oh, faces. And she did say to me, she said to me today, and I say this for the camera, for anyone listening, I do not tell adults what to do. I don't have the time to give a hoot. Mm -hmm. I tell children what to do. I want to go into school and help the kids decipher right from wrong, good from bad, growth. But a grown person that owes taxes, ah, they're on their own. And the poor children. And she, and she, <laughs> and right, poor wait, and she asked me, she did, and we talk all the time, and she knows I don't, and she said, Cozy, what would you do? I said, not today, uh -oh. not tomorrow. Okay. I'm not going to make this easy for you. You're a grown woman making major decisions in your life, and I don't want to hear it. I don't ever want somebody to come back and say, Cozy, Cozy didn't say anything <laughs> regarding your messed up life. So what are you going to do? I also don't have a, a lot of patience to be around folks who do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wait for, till she's going to get a martyr to look at her face and say this to her. I, I don't do crap well. This is, again, it's my life. It's my time. It's my energy. It's my love. It's what I don't want to be around people in bad anythings. Jobs, relationships, <laughs> girlfriends, boyfriends, <laughs> children. Mm. Mm -hmm. I will love you from here. Don't come closer. Right. And stop calling. <laughs> Don't go on, stop. <laughs> I, I'm not that person. I could be, but the other part about my life, I have such wonderful friends who, there's a good deal of them. Most of them uh, have great relationships. Unfortunately, now in my generation, they've lost, some of them lost their partners. But even when their partners were alive, these are people who used their brains before they met these individuals and actually communicate it. I would like the world at large, if they hear nothing else come out of my mouth, is to think about how much more your life would be worth to you if you simply communicate it to the person, persons, or whomever, what it is you don't like. It might be nice even to say, I like that you bought me flowers last week, sweetheart. I like that you ran my bath for me before I came home. I like that you took my car and washed it without me having to ask you. Because I understand women like to complain more than they like to give out compliments. I don't know. This is what my male friends do. <laughs> That's a true male friend. <laughs> Remember, I don't have to be committed to anybody. It don't work. Right? So, before we go, first of all, this has been absolutely wonderful. You have pulled me out of my shell. Oh, for God forbid. God forbid. 
I want you please to tell the, the, uh, the audience what you, what you do, how you make a difference every day, and how we, the viewers, can help Angelique grow her business. So the name of it, where it's located, and we'll also have it on the website. So um, I'm an artist. Um, I, I work for a very famous artist. Her name is Miss Annie Lee, and um, she really inspired me to follow my dream. Um, I have a studio downtown called the Shoe Chick Art Studio. Um, it's kind of a goofy name because there's a little story behind it. When I was a little girl, I always got teased about what size shoe I wore. In the sixth grade, I wore a woman's size 12 shoe. Yeah, and after two children, you know, they say your feet grow. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen to me. I always, already wear a size 12. How could I pop? I don't even know anybody that wears a 13, right? Or, so I wear today a woman's size 13 shoe. But in my adult life, I decided that what makes you, well, I've heard this over and over, but what makes you special and unique is your gift and what you do with it, it's up to you. Some people, it, you know, their gifts are hidden. It's what makes you special and unique. What are you gonna do with it? So I was working for the famous artist, my, my, fam my uh, friend, and I thought I'd have a little fun with it. So I tried my hand at painting and I put fun sayings like walk in peace, walk in love, walk in faith, and there were pictures of shoes and um, people like them. And I had another mentor that said, why are you painting so, so small? You should paint bigger. Do you really wanna do this? Then play full out, don't, don't hide, you know? So started painting shoes bigger. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm bigger than the Bigger, same. bigger and shoes. Then I got a studio and then I and got another studio. So well, my second studio, so I only have one. So, um, it just grew and grew and then I went to a paint party and I said, wow, I can do that better than her. This is boring. I'm way more fun than her. I have way better music. I can paint like a variety of different things. So I started doing paint parties. So that's really been the bulk of my business right now and with the COVID uh, thing, um, I'm doing most of them virtually now. So you can come and pick up a kit and go online with my YouTube tutorials or you can book me live to paint on Zoom until the world opens up. But to stay connected to my brand of the shoe chick, I donate 10%, I partner with a Christian organization and I don't donate 10% of everything I make to help kids in Africa get shoes. So the Christian organization is called Life Today and it's a Christmas shoe project. And every year over 100,000 pairs of shoes go to Africa. So it's pretty cool to be able to stay connected to the whole reason I started, you know? So that's what I do. And I do, um, like I said, the bulk of my business is, has been paint parties. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping uh, one day, well, not hoping, I will travel the world and do paint parties for the kidney community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a kidney uh, organ donor. I gave my husband my kidney last year in August, and he is doing amazingly well. And um, it was a blessing just to be a match. Uh -huh. And back and forth uh -huh. from here, Las Vegas to Arizona, um, multiple times having to live in a hotel for a month while he recovered and got pneumonia and a blood clot. And he is good today. And I never want to lose sight of that blessing. So I'm using my gift. I will be using my gift to travel the country with him. Um, do paint parties for anybody that's been affected, anybody on dialysis, family members, kids. And I want them to be able to come and paint for free. So I'll be looking for sponsors. Is that the camera? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will be looking for sponsors. So, um, so I'll be able to accomplish that. And even without the sponsors, I'll find a way to mm -hmm. do it. But it's a tough, lonely journey on dialysis and um, when I go into these places, there's no, there's no happiness. It's like, it's sad, like instantly, it's sad and it smells like bleach and it's just awful. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I'm using my gift mm -hmm. to spread joy and to serve in the world because you're supposed to find your gift, get really, really good at it and um, find a way to serve. So that's what I'm doing. So that's how I have this calmness about me now. Like I know what I'm doing. I'm working, I'm in my, I work on my gift every day. And I know what it, my mission is here and what my purpose is here. So, and I think that's why a lot of people are, you know, kind of confused and miserable sometimes and 
they don't even take this time like during COVID to figure it out and to get better at whatever it is that you do, you know? And I mean, this is just a great time to grow. Would it be possible for uh, corporations to bring you into their offices? Uh, for yeah, party? absolutely. I've done right. that. Like something I've done else charity that... events, raise money for churches, schools. As soon as COVID hit, my whole calendar went dry. I had to think, 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 and I instantly started doing that on uh, on uh, on Zoom. And that's still picking up for fundraisers mm -hmm. and children events and things like that because we've all adapted during this time. But I can't wait for the world to open back up. Oh my goodness, we had so much fun. <laughs> we had so much fun. Every time I had a paint party, it was just um, you know, art is therapeutic. Do you do the ones with the wine? Yes, I do. I want to do that. That's what the, those are all. And the, I all the ones I have right. have wine. Right. As a matter of fact, because <laughs> I thought that's wine. I only saw you with the kids. No, oh, can I bring beer? Actually, it's, there's not very many pictures with kids. Oh, okay. I do a lot of people that look like you and I. Okay, <laughs> that's you, my demographic is okay. drawing people. Las Vegas has been really good to me, good. and I've met so many wonderful people and so many people that seek me out to support me. Good. And I think it's just, yeah, you can make it here. People say the community is not strong sometimes, and it's like, Again, that's the nice you, what are you doing? I'm hustling. I really am. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you want to keep that beautiful smile on your face. I am. Thank you. I am hustling. <laughs> and I might not be the best artist out there. I, I might not be, but my, my hustle is fierce. Yeah. We're not trying to be the better than anyone else. We yeah. just want to be better than ourselves. You know, some people get intimidated, though. You know, I look at other people's art. You know, you look at other people's stuff sometimes, which you shouldn't do and compare yourself mm -hmm. to. But work ethic has a lot to do with how well you will do in anything. Right? Yep. So, yep. so that's my story. The shoechickstore.com makes a little bit more sense now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I just want to call you Bigfoot so bad. I know. I, just, I've I, yeah, heard you, everything. You walk I've heard some that. pretty vulgar things. I have two girlfriends. I've heard all the vulgar things that are going through your head, too. No, I've heard it no, all. I don't know. Nobody could whoop me in school, though. So there wasn't, that, there wasn't a problem. You could kick yeah, their butt. No, nobody <laughs> could whoop me in school. So that wasn't a big deal. <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, I had to do something with it because it was too strange. <laughs> and I have two girlfriends that have sizes larger than you. Oh. Mm hmm. Wow. Yep, both of them. Big feet. That's tough. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, they had the first two before you. And I met you the other day, and I said, wow, that's third, third lady with these big feet. <laughs> Somebody's got to have them. Thank God I don't. Uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart oh, for visiting, you. cozy up and pay attention, bringing uh, yourself to the community, what, you, what you're what you putting out there, what you're going to give back. Please don't become a stranger. I'd love to have you back another time. And just for the audience uh, information, you and I are going to do a few of your paintings in my next, in my second book. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I am thank too. you so looking much. Looking forward to putting those shoes in there. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, here's the end. Hold the door. Say please. Say thank you. Don't steal. Don't cheat. And don't lie. I know you have mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. Good night. <laughs> I like that.